Thanks for turning to page 121. Today we're going to talk about a topic that's really exciting for people to sit down and craft their characters and get that backstory they want and get everything going, and that's insurance. Yes, everyone's so excited about worrying about insurance in a role-playing game. But that's the, the subject of today's video, simply because it's always bothered me that Traveler doesn't really discuss insurance much. You get a couple of mentions here and there of various mega corporations doing insurance, but nothing on your ship. You're taking a ship for a 40-year mortgage, and yet there's no discussion of insurance, of how you'll pay if the ship gets damaged, or how the people who gave you the mortgage will be compensated if you skip on it. Is there in, you know, mortgage insurance for when you skip? Does the company get paid back, and then you're, you're followed by people that want to collect the debt? That part of it is pretty well documented, but nothing about how the company that gave you the mortgage in the first place gets compensated. So we're going to take a little bit of a look at that, and we're going to take a look at medical debt also in Traveler. It's something you can actually have coming out of character creation, or something that can literally leave you penniless coming out of character creation. And yet it's, it's not dealt with, in my mind, very coherently. So I'm going to go over a few house rules that I put on both ship insurance and medical insurance. And we're just going to talk about it today. The medical insurance uh, is going to primarily come out of the 2022 core update, core rulebook update. Uh, love this book. And there's good information in here, at least to generating your character, and how to end up with medical debt and how to discharge the medical debt. Also, I want to mention Jump Point. There she is. Neat little logo. Jump Point is happening November 6th in Mount Prospect at a great game store called Games Plus. It's going to be running from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. That's on Sunday. Right now, the plan is that uh, we're going to have character creation, dying in character creation. So you ever wanted to have your character die in original Traveler character creation, now's your chance to scratch that item off your bucket list. I'll be running it, and my son Adam will be running it based on demand. I'm hoping there's so much demand we have to expand it. Uh, we're also going to be uh, running two tables right now, uh, one DM by me and one GM by my son, Adam. And we're going to be doing a little social experiment with this, and I'm not going to reveal anything about the social experiment yet. I haven't decided if I'll say anything beforehand or after. Probably I'll, I'll save it till after. So it's a fresh experience for the players at the table. But right now, it's going to be Adam and I uh, running a table up to seven people each. Uh, we have five people signed on that are going to be attending, plus I'll be bringing uh, five, three of whom will be playing. So we have a confirmed eight players. So we're looking for more, and I'm also looking for GMs. Adam said he'll step aside, and we can, we can put the social experiment on hold if uh, we wanted to, and, and anyone else can step in and GM for him. To his credit, he's GM plenty of games, but he's never GM Traveler before, and he's willing to sit down and do it for a group of strangers. So I give him a lot of props for that, but I'll be right there to help him, and it, it, it'll go off fine. Adam's a very strong GM. It'll go fine. So that's it for the jump point thing. Also subscriptions. Yay! Thank you guys. They picked back up. I don't know what that lull was. I'm just going to assume it's one of those life things. And there was a lull and now they've picked back up and they're, and they're moving again. So thank you everyone who's subscribed. Everybody who's thinking about it or knows someone who's thinking about it. Come on in. Talk about games here a lot. And then of course Patreon. Patreon is still going. Thank you to my patrons. I really appreciate your support. Uh, can always... Uh, want to expand that simply because I want to upgrade my equipment, my backgrounds, maybe, I don't know, some other stuff I, I haven't even thought about yet. So there's a link to the Patreon below. Please take a look at it if you can help out. That'd be great. So that's it. Back to today, the exciting topic of insurance in space. Oh boy, insurance. Well, nah, I don't think anybody's ever said that, but the point is, there should be some mention of insurance in Traveler. Now, to be fair, I come from a bit of an insurance uh, family background. My mother was VP of an insurance company, and my brother was a high-ranking officer in an insurance company. So I have an unusual knowledge of insurance just by living with them and, and being family members with them over the years. So insurance is always something that's kind of, I don't know, been kind of in my brain because I had a lot of it in my household, a lot of discussions of it. So why do we care about insurance? Well, you've, you've signed the papers. You've got a 40-year mortgage on a ship. You're going to be making payments on every four weeks for the next 40 years. 
and they they give you all the codes and the keys or whatever you need to fly the thing and off you go and you leave it's incredible to believe that there wouldn't be some kind of assurance for the lender that's given you this 40-year mortgage that they would be compensated in the, the very real probability that you default on it for whatever reason uh, up to and including you die you skip uh, the ship gets taken from you it gets damaged beyond repair uh, it's that's what happens uh, I know that you know when you sign a mortgage you have to have insurance on the house and you have to show that you have insurance on the house and you can't even drive the house in most cases yet you have to have insurance on it in case there's a loss to the house and it has to be compensated back to the mortgage lender so that never made sense to me in Traveler so one of the ways I kind of got around it a little bit was I have always said and I it, it's been an arbitrary number that's only come up at the table I think once in all the years I've I've GM Traveler and I, I've pulled a, an arbitrary percentage, you know, roughly 1% of the four weekly payments. Uh, and that gets set aside for insurance on the vessel itself and to compensate the lender. A lot of times the lender can also underwrite their own uh, debt. I'm not going to go into that because despite my jokes at the top, this video is not about insurance, the adventure in space. It's just about the logic of insurance in a game like Traveler. So the way I've always done it is a, a very tiny portion of your uh, mortgage payments goes toward insurance to compensate the lender in the event that you, for whatever reason, default on the loan. If they can't get the ship back or if the ship is brought back in terrible condition, they'll get compensated the difference and, and be able to be made whole that way. So that's, that's one of the ways to handle it. And uh, in researching this video, I, I found amazingly little on uh, any topic of traveler with insurance. A few of the mega corporations uh, are talked about having uh, insurance as one of the, their profiles, one of the things they do, but nothing beyond that. Nothing, you know, they insure the royal family or whatever, but nothing beyond that about how they make their money insuring things. So again, I realize it's not traveler the insurance game, but it, it's a logical thing. If, if I have a class A starport and uh, most especially if I have a Class A starport and I am a planet that has paid for the starport, I'm going to make darn sure that your ship is insured properly before I let you come into any of my docking slips. Last thing I need is some uninsured bozo who doesn't know what he's doing ramming into my ship, causing millions of credits of damage that he has no way to pay me back for. I know I could take him to court and things like that, but it's still not going to compensate me for the repairs I have to do. So to my mind, one of the things that you would be sending along when you request your docking slip is all your insurance information, how you're covered. And there are ways to hack that and you could, you know, make it part of your transponder if you wanted to, or just a separate code given by the insurance company. There's a lot of different ways that you can do it. And there's a lot of ways that can be turned into a role-playing opportunity where somebody has no insurance, but they found a way to uh, fake that they do. They've found uh, codes and they, they're able to hack the codes. I don't know. It's nothing I've ever done. As I said, I think insurance has come up exactly once at my table in 40 plus years of playing Traveler and running Traveler, but it's still something that's always kind of been in the back of my mind. So that's kind of how I solve the whole Starship insurance thing. Now, the other question becomes, you know, at what point does the insurance not pay? If you are taking the ship into a known area, uh, an area that's known to be dangerous due to piracy, if you take it into there, there could be a rider in your contract that says you're not compensated if something happens to the vessel if you take it there. Another thing that would be easy to do if you have a merchant ship that's running basically the same run is you could get insurance only for that run. And if you use the ship outside of that run, then you would be out of luck and the insurance wouldn't cover. Another thing that's always kind of been in the back of my head, and it's always assumed that the player characters just have this, this problem, is there's no insurance on cargo. Cargo gets lost or damaged all the time in Traveler, yet there's no insurance that you can take out against that loss. You just suffer that loss. And again, that depends on how granular you want to get in your game on this topic. And it's not one I'm planning on diving into. I'm just doing a little bit of a, I don't know, a mild rant on it. But one thing I am changing rules on is medical debt coming out of character creation. And here we go. Character creation, you can suffer an injury. And I would say that a lot of travelers, myself among them, in creating a character, have rolled an injury on the character on the character generation. 
it's not the same as dying. Dying is fun because that's just how travel used to be. But if you get injured, they can be significant. Nearly killed. Reduce one physical characteristic by one dice. Reduce two other characteristics by two points. That's significant in traveling. If I've got sevens across the board and I throw a die for a five, I now have a two in that stat and all my others drop from seven to five. That's not good. And then, of course, you have severely injured. Reduce one characteristic by one die. Missing eye or limb, reduce strength or dex by two. Scarred, you are scarred and injured, reduce your physical characteristics by two, any physical characteristic by two. Injured, reduce any physical characteristic by one. And number six, lightly injured, no permanent effect. And then we have medical care. And here they talk about medical care. If you've been injured, a medical care may be able to undo the effects of the damage, but it's going to cost you. Uh, and restoration of a lost characteristic costs 5,000 credits per point. That can be expensive. If you were injured in the service of an organization, then a portion of your medical bill may be paid may be paid for. Roll two die on the medical bills table, adding your rank as a die modifier. So if I'm in the Army, Navy, or Marine, and I roll a four up, they pay for 75%, eight up, 100%, 12 up, 100%. Now, I get that, except, and you could always say, well, he wasn't injured in his role as a member of the Marines, he was injured in an off-duty, off-base car accident, air, air car accident. Therefore, we're only going to pay 75% of the injuries. The rest is on him. And I get that. Except I like to think that even once, once mustered out, anybody that served in the Imperial Service, in any of the arms of the actual Imperial Service, would be entitled to pretty good insurance. And I'm talking like in the, the range of 90% coverage, regardless of what it was, unless, of course, it was illegal. So now we get back to the whole traveler players thing. Okay, you've got a guy who's been severely injured in a, a firefight. He's been, been shot. Well, you go and you go to the local hospital and you have to answer the embarrassing question is, how did this happen? How come you were shot? And uh, now the police get called in and you're investigated and everything else. So that can be a nice role-playing aspect, too. I've had that happen one time in a game and the players ended up kind of carrying the wounded guy out of this, the facility because they hadn't thought about the fact that they were going to get investigated in the first place. So they kind of brought him out of there and then and found your you know, local Dr. Nick and uh, hi everybody and uh, got him fixed up that way. So I get it. Uh, but if, if you're in an Imperial career to me, uh, such as Army, Navy, Marines, Scouts, I would say that you would have pretty darn good coverage. And the reason I'm, I'm talking about this is coming out of character creation with medical debt. Here we are, medical debt. You can actually lose all of your mustering out benefits and still owe on medical debt out of character creation. Now, I don't know about you guys, but one of the reasons I play these games is to get away from life. And I'm sure, like most people, at one time or another, I have had medical debt. Uh, when my first son was born, I had oh, what we'll call euphemistically garbage insurance. Uh, we were on for a lot of that, and it took us a little while to pay it off. So I'm not looking to sit down at the table, roll up my character, get all excited, set the time aside, and then worry about my character being settled with medical debt. I've got enough of that stuff in my real life. I'm not really going to build it into my role playing. So despite my conversation about how we should address insurance in Traveler, I am not starting player characters out with medical debt. It's just my choice. So if you want to sit at my table and uh, have a character that's guaranteed not to have medical debt coming out of character creation, I'm your GM. And I realize this is a, a very personal decision. It's, it's something I'm making for my players, but I've talked to my players about it and universally they've said, no, the last thing in the world I want is to have a character that's got medical debt. So that's just my thinking. I realize that medical debt can add a lot to role-playing, that you can go to desperate lengths to pay it off. You can skip on it. There's a lot of things you can do to role-play it, and I'm not denying any of that. But I'm also thinking there are a lot of other ways I can build in similar storylines without saddling a character with something like medical debt. Just my thoughts on the topic. So in my mind, traveler medical care is, and higher techs especially, is pretty basic. You can get good care, and it shouldn't be at a ton of cost. And it's not something I'm really going to be bearing my characters in debt for. 
That being said, if they want antigathics, yeah, they're going to have to pay. Uh, antigathics are not ordinary medical debt uh, or, you know, ordinary, ordinary medical care. They're, they're something else. They're extra legal. They're not necessarily illegal, but they're extra legal in the Imperium. And if one of my characters says, yeah, I want antigathics, well, that's fine. I have a character, had, he hasn't played in years, uh, who have, was on antigathics. It was my character, Rourke Walton. You might recognize him from a couple of the old uh, T20 storyboards. Uh, Rourke Walton was my character. And old Rourke uh, got some anagathics very early in his career, and I liked the idea. So I paid all the money, all the credits, and had Rourke on anagathics. But that was something that I chose to do, and it, it cost me out of my, my character. So that's it on insurance. I just kind of, I've always thought it was significant in its absence in Traveler, at least not a mention here and there. I'm sure that, I know I read some thing about a spaceport with insurance, proper insurance ID, and I don't remember the source. If you know the source, please let me know. I'm thinking it was the GURPS spaceport spork, but I couldn't find it when I looked through it, and I might have just missed it. So if you know where I might have seen that, let me know. Or if there was an article in Space Gamer or White Dwarf or Dragon that dealt with this topic, and, and I just missed it over the years, please let me know. If you could send me in that direction, I'd love to read up on it. So that's all I've got to save today for page 121. I want to thank you for your time. Thanks for watching. Uh, please remember to like and subscribe. Uh, tell your friends. Uh, also remember the Patreon. And of course, remember Jump Point on November 6th in Mount Prospect at Games Plus. Bring money. It's a completely free event. This is a great game store. You're going to want to buy some stuff. So that's it. I'll see you next time on page 121.